Welcome, little friends. Happy Sabbath. Thank you for joining us today. Make sure you have your Bibles like I do so that you can be ready to follow our story for today. So this story is fantastic. Today's story is going to be based on Mark 14, John 12, and Luke 7. So we're going to use three um, books in the Bible. So before we continue, we are going to sing a song. before we begin so that we can start with Jesus. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful Sabbath day. We thank you for giving us the Bible so that we can learn more about you. Please bless us now with your Holy Spirit and we pray that these lessons will be impressed upon our minds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Today's Bible story is called A Gift for Jesus. Jesus is happy when we give him our hearts and our very best gifts to him. Today's memory verse is found in 1 John 4.19. We love him because he first loved us. And how do we love him because he first loved us? We will find out throughout the story. Well, there's a song about it, of course, in the hymnal. There's a song about everything mm -hmm. that we learn. And I made up a, just a, a beautiful song made out of this verse. And it says, We love him because he first loved us. We love him because he first loved us. Says the Bible and first John 4.19. Thank you, Angelica. That was very good. We loved him because he first loved us. Perfect. Mm -hmm. We love him because he first loved us. Perfect. I hope you friends can do it also. And until the next time we verse. It was Friday, just six days before the Passover would begin in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Jesus knew that he must be at that feast, so he and his disciples had been traveling toward the city. Wow. They decided to rest during the Sabbath in Bethany, a little town near Jerusalem. And that's, do you remember who lived in there? Yes, it's Jesus' good friends. Mm -hmm. His special friends live in Bethany. Mm -hmm. Let's look in John chapter 12, verse 1. Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus had been dead whom he had raised from the dead. So Lazarus lived there. This is kind of complicated, but to some, to make it simple, um, that place in Bethany was where Lazarus, who was dead, had been raised up from, mm -hmm. from the death. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Lazarus' sisters, Martha and Mary, also lived there. As Jesus usually did when he was in Bethany, he stayed at their home. How happy they were to welcome Jesus. Wow. Another man also lived in Bethany. He was a rich Pharisee named Simon. Mm -hmm. Simon had been very sick with leprosy. Jesus healed him when Simon asked him. Jesus also forgave his sins. Simon believed that Jesus was a good teacher, and he even hoped that he would be the Messiah. Whew. But Simon did not let Jesus change his heart, so he was still proud and selfish. Mm. Simon was glad to hear that Jesus had come. He wanted Jesus to come to his house, yeah. and so he invited Jesus to eat in his house that Sabbath. Wow. And Jesus accepted the invitation, and he went to Simon's house. There were many people at Simon's feast. Mm -hmm. Some were excited because they thought maybe Jesus would become king during the Passover. Some of the people at Simon's feast were happy to see Jesus. But others did not like Jesus. They hated him and they watched him very closely mm -hmm. to see if they can find some excuse to kill him. So Jesus was eating at Simon's house mm -hmm. and, well, Yes, you will think Simon sat next to Jesus on one side and Lazarus sat next to him on the other side. So they were both together yes. and Martha helped to serve the food to the guests. Mm -hmm. Correct. Many people wanted to see Lazarus, whom Jesus had made alive again. They hoped that he would tell them stories about wonderful things that he had seen while he was dead. But of course, Lazarus hadn't seen anything. He no. had just slept in the tomb until he exactly. heard Jesus' voice waking him up. I think, just to make it a little simple, what was happening is that they were thinking, oh, he might tell us about his dreams what he had and while he was while he was dead. Maybe he'll tell us some of his dreams that he had mm. and all these other things. Probably they were thinking about that. They're like, how is it to be dead? Nobody knows nothing when they're dead. Mm -hmm. So it's just, um, it's just like something when you go to bed, but you never wake up again. <laughs> and this is what the Bible tells us. Would you, Uncle Tom, read for us? Sure. In Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 5, it says, For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. And they have no more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. In Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 5, it says, for the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. Exactly. So here's the point. Do the living know that they will die? Mm -hmm. Exactly. They're sick. Or probably they're not even sick. Sometimes people just... Have an accident. Have an accident. Or mm -hmm. they get a stroke. Or something has happened. And they die. Mm -hmm. Just like that. But they know that they will die. Mm -hmm. But they didn't know nothing, of course not. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That's what the Bible teaches. Because they're just dead. They don't know nothing, what's happening mm -hmm. around them. Nothing is in their memory. Mm -hmm. they, they are, and their body is working to make the person into dust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the dust makes the plants grow. And there's just like a chain of things that happen. Mm -hmm. And that happens over and over and over. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it says yeah, also in the same verse that they have no more reward for the memory of them is forgotten. And, and then, uh, can you read John chapter 5 verse 25? Yes. Most assuredly I say to you the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. So who is dead? The people that have uh, fallen asleep in Jesus. Uh-huh, and they have fallen, and they are dead in Christ. Yeah. Yes, yes. And who is living? The people who are still alive when Jesus comes. Well, yeah, that's a clue. I mean, when, when somebody dies, again, Jesus, if they listen to Jesus, and they die in Jesus' hands, mm -hmm. Jesus will raise them up with yes. a powerful voice, just as he did with Lazarus. Mm -hmm. But 
Did the living know that they will die soon? Hmm. Yes, exactly. Just as we saw in Ecclesiastes. Mm -hmm. So, here's the point. We are going, if we die in Christ, we'll go to heaven. Mm -hmm. And if we still live, we'll praise the Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, Lazarus did tell everyone that Jesus was God's son. Yeah. He couldn't tell them anything about being dead because being dead, like the Bible says, is knowing nothing. It's like when you go to sleep very, very, very super, super, super tired and you can't remember a thing you dreamed. You can't even remember what you heard or not heard because you don't hear anything when you're sleeping that good. Yes. So Mary was also in the room during the feast, during the Sabbath lunch, and she loved Jesus with all her heart. And this is Mary Magdalene. Yeah, and she listened to everything Jesus said. Do you know why Mary loved Jesus so much? Well, let's see. Well, Jesus had forgiven her sins and helped her stop doing wicked things. Mm -hmm. He had prayed for her many times. You know that Jesus prays for you and me many times too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for you too, friends. He prays for us. He prays and for everyone in the world. He wants and everyone when, to be saved. And when we ask him, Lord, please forgive this person. Lord, please do all these things that we would like you to do. Because he, he answers was... our prayer, but sometimes it takes a little while. But then he answers our prayers. Mm -hmm. And he and he convicts people and he helps people. Um, he heals the people mm -hmm. and all these wonderful things he does. Yes. You know, Jesus wants the best for each one of us. And that's why he prayed even for Mary. He wanted the best for her. He wanted to protect her, to give her a better life. Yeah. And what more than to have Jesus, you know, pray for you. It's beautiful. And so Jesus had made her precious brother alive again, Lazarus. Sometime before, Mary had heard Jesus say that he was going to die soon. And she remembered that. She remembered that very well. She didn't forget. So she wanted to show Jesus how much she loved him. But what could she do? She had saved a lot of money and she decided that instead of buying something nice for herself, she will get a special present for Jesus. Well, how loving she was. She mm -hmm. wanted just to get a special present before Jesus would die or mm -hmm. before he would become a king. Mm -hmm. She wanted to be the first one to honor Jesus. Wow. Yes, you know, that brings to mind that we should be like that too. Mm -hmm. Jesus prays for us. He intercedes for us. He tries everything to give us a life, a heavenly life, like uh, to protect us. You know, we should be like Mary, grateful and always loving towards him. Let's see what the Bible says. Can you read us, Uncle Tom, in Luke seven thirty seven? What did Mary buy? And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil. Wow, what is she going to do with that lovely perfume? Mm -hmm. Maybe give it as a gift, but nowadays we have these beautiful bags like for every holiday we have bags to put our special gifts in there and then we bring it to the people and they're like thank you <laughs> and they are so Mary loved Jesus and she felt terribly sad that he was going to die soon so what did she do can you read that again because I couldn't understand the word Mary I think you said okay. Mary it's Mary and you have to close your lips. <laughs> so Mary, she was happy. That made her very happy to hear that Jesus was going to become king. And so she wanted to be the first one to honor Jesus. But she didn't want anyone to see how she was going to do it. Mm -hmm. Very quietly, while she was at Simon's feast, 
she opened the bottle of special perfume she had brought. Let's find out what she did with the perfume. And John 12, 3. Well then, Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed to the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. Wow. Wow. So Mary also poured some of it on Jesus' head. Mm. Then she knelt down and kissed Jesus' feet. Mm. She softly cried as she thought about how good and kind Jesus had been to her. Her tears fell on Jesus' feet mm. and she wiped them off with her long hair. Mary had tried to be quiet so that no one would notice her, but she had forgotten that everyone would smell the lovely perfume. Soon she heard Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, complaining about her. Mm. Let's read what he said in Mark 14, 4, verse 5. And the Bible says, But there were some who were indignant among themselves and said, why was this fragrant oil wasted? Uh -oh, uh -oh. For it might have been sold for more than 300 denarii uh -oh. and given to the poor. Uh -oh. And they criticized her sharply. Uh oh. But Judas didn't really care about poor people at all. He was a thief and he wished that the money Mary had used to buy that special present for Jesus had been put into the money bag he cared for Jesus. Mm. Then he could steal some and buy something nice for himself. Judas or Mary? Which one really loved Jesus? Which one was unselfish and thankful? Mary, of course. Mm -hmm. So Mary. Judas was so selfish, he didn't even want to change his heart. Mm. But who really wanted to be like Jesus? Mary. Exactly. Let's go on to the next part of the story. Everyone at Simon's feast knew what Mary had done. She had poured a whole bottle of expensive perfume on Jesus' head mm. and feet, and the room was filled with the lovely fragrance. Judas had said some bad things about Mary, and soon many other people were complaining too. When Mary heard what Judas was saying, she felt afraid. Would Martha say something unkind about her using so much money to buy a gift for Jesus? Hmm. And what if Jesus didn't like her gift? Poor Mary. Trembling and afraid, she decided to quickly leave the room right away. Then she heard Jesus' kind, tender voice. Let's find out what he said in Mark 14.6. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me. Mm -hmm. mm. Jesus knew that Mary had really been saying, Thank you for forgiving my sins and helping me change. He knew that she loved him with all her heart, and he was pleased with her gift. Jesus didn't want Mary to feel upset. He was the Son of God, and it was right for Mary to honor him. Let's read what Jesus said next in verse 7 and 8. For you have the poor with you always, and whenever you wish, you may do them good. But me you do not have always. She has done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body for burial. The people at the feast didn't know that before the very next Sabbath, Jesus would die. But Jesus knew it, and what Mary did helped him when he was dying. Thinking of her love reminded him that many other people would love him like Mary did. Do you? Mm. Yes. Did you know that Mary's unselfish gift of love made selfish Judas feel so guilty? Hmm. So he said some bad things about Mary. 
But Jesus said, She has done a good work for me. And Mary had tried to keep her gift a secret. <laughs> that was interesting. How can you keep a secret a perfume that smells so good? <laughs> <laughs> Even when you put a little bit of um, perfume, mm -hmm. you know, people can smell, mm, well, you way. smell good. <laughs> <laughs> But Jesus wanted everyone to know what she had done so that others would copy her unselfish love. Jesus knew that after he died, his disciples would go everywhere in the world to tell people about him. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Let's see what other story will they tell everywhere they went. Can you read Uncle Tom Mark 14 and 9 for us? Assuredly, I say to you, wheresoever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. Wow, that's very special, isn't it? Yes. It's just like um, that woman that gave all she had at the offering plate in the temple, remember? Her story also was going to be told everywhere. Well, Judas did not love Jesus, did he? And he didn't like what Jesus said about Mary. He could tell that Jesus knew all about his selfishness and stealing. And he hurried away from the feast, from the Sabbath lunch on Sabbath mm. to find a way to hurt Jesus mm. on the Sabbath day. Wow. On the very Sabbath day, he went away from Jesus to find a way to hurt him. Mm. Simon didn't like what Mary had done either. And Simon should have, because he was just healed from leprosy, wasn't he? Hmm. He should have been grateful. Oh, boy. He knew that Mary was a sinner. And when he saw Mary touching Jesus' feet, he was indignant too. Hmm. And when he saw her wiping them with her hair, he was so indignant. Let's see what he said. Can you read Luke 7, 39, Angelica? Now, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would know whom and what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. Hmm. So he was saying this to himself. Where? In his mind. In his mind. And do you know who can read your mind alone? Jesus. Hmm. Jesus is the only one that can read our thoughts. Mm -hmm. Isn't that wonderful in a way? Because you can tell him, you can speak to him throughout the day. Yes. You can ask him to help you. Mm -hmm. Simon was proud and he didn't know that his own sins were much worse than Mary's sins. Mm -hmm. Jesus wanted to help him, didn't he? Mm -hmm. But would Simon listen? If he said, you are a very bad sinner? Hmm, probably not. No, I don't think so either. So what did Jesus do instead? Well, Jesus usually tells a story. Yes, and sure enough, he did. He told Simon a story. Let's see what story he told him in the next part with Angelica. In the story Jesus told, one man needed to pay back 500 pieces of money and the other men needed to pay just 50. But neither of them had anything to pay when the men who had let them use his money wanted it back. That would happen. Let's read in Luke 7. Okay, the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 7 verse 42 and 43. It says, And when they had nothing with which to repay, He freely forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? And Simon answered and said, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. Wow. <clears throat> then Jesus gently showed that Simon's sins were worse than Mary's sins. Simon had a mean story for being proud. He didn't really love Jesus and he hadn't even been very polite. 
why when Jesus came to his house that day. So the sin was actually pride. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, you cannot see pride, can you? No, neither can you see how selfish she was. Well, you can't see selfishness you and you cannot see pride. You can't see inside mm -hmm. the heart, but mm -hmm. Jesus can. Yep. He is the only one that, that can change us and convict us. So Simon knew that Jesus' story was about him and Mary. Jesus had forgiven Mary's sins, which were very bad. She knew how wicked she had been. So she was very, very thankful that Jesus forgave her and helped her choose to do right. Jesus had also forgiven Simon's sins, but Simon didn't think that his sins were very bad, mm. so he wasn't very thankful that Jesus forgave him. Hmm. Then what did Jesus say to Mary? Verse 48. Well, in verse 48 it says, Then Jesus said to Mary, Your sins are forgiven. Hmm. What a merciful Wonderful. God we have. So Simon was glad Jesus had told all his guests about his sins. Mm -hmm. He would have gotten in trouble. Jesus' gentle kindness changed Simon. Now he saw that his sins were very bad. And he was truly sorry after that story. Mm -hmm. He, of course, Jesus forgave him. And after that, Simon became a humble disciple of Jesus and loved Jesus with all his heart too. Oh, Do you want to be like him? Yes. Let's go over our memory verse for today, that it, which is found in 1 John 4.19. We love him because he first loved, he first loved us. We love him because he first loved us. 1 John 4.19. <laughs> Thank you, Angelica. That's very nice. Well, I hope your little friends can do that at home as well. Then we're going to have a conclusion. Well, in our story, both Mary and Simon, they had sinned, and we too sin. And you know, Jesus forgives us just like he forgave them. Yeah. And out of love for him, when we see how gently he is trying to show us that what we are doing is hurting others and ourselves and Him. He wants us to trust Him with all of our heart and He will set us free from those sins. And then we are filled with gratitude just like Mary and Jesus will accept our gifts of thankfulness. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you all for this day that have given us. Please bless us as we go ahead and do some of our things. And thank you, Lord, for the story they have given us. And please help us to change our character. And please forgive our sins and help us and change us. And please bless us in Jesus' and now we pray. Amen. 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 What a beautiful lesson we had today. I hope you can share this Bible story with someone this week. And choose to give Jesus a special gift this week. We'll have some music next to end this program. And may you be blessed. And have a beautiful Sabbath day. And don't remember to practice your memory verses.
school is so